Uh, so my name is Mark Trevin Campbells, and I'm presenting a paper on bringing C sound to a modern production environment using C sound for live. So what is C sound for live? C sound for live is uh, the, the act of using C sound to make live devices in, in Max for live. And the way you do that is with an external called C sound tilde. And C sound tilde allows you to receive audio and MIDI from Ableton as well as uh, Max, you, you can use it in, in standalone Max as well. And you can also send uh, certain messages um, that, that correspond to things in the, in the live API, or uh, sorry, in the CSound API um, that, that allow you to manipulate the CSD that you have loaded into CSound. So why would you want to use CSound for live as opposed to um, maybe just recording C sound directly into a DAW with something like Soundflower or Jack, or um, just, just building a, a C sound performance instrument, or as we saw um, yesterday, kind of some of the examples that uh, Ian McCurdy did in, in Cabbage. And one of the things that's really useful about um, using Max and Max for Live is it allows you to make uh, UI really quickly. You can, you can already um, imitate the, the live UI because all of the, or, or almost all of the live UI objects are already in Max and you can load them up and change the colors, change the font, change the names and it's, it's very quick and very simple and you don't have to kind of uh, go around and, and, and try to make your own UI elements. You already have something that looks nice and, and clean included. Um, you can also use the stock Max objects, and you can also, um, using uh, certain objects in Max like a pick slider, and um, you, you, can, you can use your own images um, for UI control, and you can have those behaved as sliders, you can have them behave as buttons, um, and, and really you, you can kind of make your own UI and have it be very customizable. And so, C Sound for Live also um, lets you sync C Sound performances to an Ableton performance. And so, if you if you have an Ableton set, or if you you have this kind of idea for a song and you want to write it, and it's at a, a certain BPM, you can sync it without having to worry about what the C Sound tempo is set to. You do have to set the tempo flag um, in CS options, but. Aside from that, uh, all you have to do is, is feed it an argument at, at runtime, and it will run with your set. Um, Ableton Live is, is built with live performance in mind, and so it's really easy to, to kind of take a piece that you've written in CSound, or, or take anything that's been written in CSound, and, and chop it up, um, run it through effects, trigger certain parts of it with a MIDI controller. Um, it's, it's really, really flexible. And finally, you can, um, as, a, as a composer or um, kind of synth designer, you, you can make your own synths and effects, um, either they're based off of what you've already done in C sound or, or something entirely new that you can't do in Max or Ableton as is. And you can make them fully automatable and you can do uh, MIDI mapping from live um, onto your UI and then you can use that UI to control uh, parameters in CSound. And so now we're going to show you some of the examples. First, you want to look at FM Bell? So, so three years ago at the CSound conference, the very first one in Hanover, we introduced CSound for Live. And um, with uh, Coleman O'Reilly, uh, we started developing a huge library of CSound instruments running in the context of Live. And this is what they looked like. Let's make a note. and uh, and. So what we had here was just, you know, a great sounding little synth. And I don't, this is FM Bell? Or is yeah. this the oh, scan? This is, this is uh, there you go, okay. So, you know, a wide 
variety of samples, a wide variety of sounds, and not a bad looking user interface. Click on the help on the right hand end, uh, info, boom, and you know, it would bring up information about the CSD. It would allow you to find out what featured opcodes were in it. You could actually click on it and it would open up the CSD in Max where you could fully edit the CSD. So these were the other advantages that not only could you build your own system, but you could then integrate with CSound and learn from CSound. We started there. Let's close FM Bell. The second step was, you know, to start getting my students involved and uh, having them build more things, and also my colleagues. Giorgio Zucco, a phenomenal C sounder, who's also developed and written and published an incredible C sound book called uh, C Sound Inside. Um, and also, he's contributed a lot to Cabbage, those instruments. So he's quite a sound designer built for me uh, and for the CSAP the Live collection a bunch of very advanced synthesizers. Now you'll notice he has a, a different look. Always on the left hand side we had links to C Sound, to Max, to the actual CSD so you could study. And then Giorgio uh, sort of taught all of us how to do menus and, and choose from a variety of waveforms. And so it wasn't a, such a, here's just an FM synth like the first one, but now each synthesizer that was made was really a big commercial synth, very versatile. And so you kind of see a little bit of that here. Let's go all the way to the right. He might even have his pro panel or something. Um, yeah, so if you hit pro, boom. He also shows you how to do pop-up menus, shows you how to do waveform displays. So this is quite a big synthesizer as you can see in the live context. But even a big instrument, let's close this, even a big instrument like this is still kind of complicated and difficult to, to, uh, to manage or understand. My students started getting advanced, inspired by Giorgio's work. And so if we go now to Pendulum Synth. So here's a synthesizer by Takehiko Tuchia. And Takehiko is now at Georgia Tech doing the master's, or I think he started his doctorate there. Um, a beautiful synth. He was with me at the first C-Sound conference performing. And if you play a note on this, it's doing table morphing. So a really interesting kind of approach. And this is something that quite hard to do, actually, in pure C-Sound alone. The combination of C-Sound and, and Max also led us to beautiful displays that you could almost never do in C-Sound. So as much as I love C sound, you couldn't really see the sound as beautiful as you could when you combine C sound with Max or C sound with Live. Okay, so as you see, just gorgeous kind of waveform displays. Now, one of my most current students before Mark, and then Mark is going to take it from here, and he's really taken the whole system now to the next level and standardized, and that's why I'm, I'm so excited to be just jumping in on this and, and delivering the paper with him because it gives me a chance to puff him up a little bit and tell you how important his work is, both for the CSUN community and the like. And he wouldn't tell you that. He's just going to tell you the facts. But Mark, let's go to the last synth by uh, Michael Johnson. So Michael has finally tried to do what Mark is saying here. He tried to make a library for us of more commercially oriented, practical synthesizers, drum kit, bass, I think he even calls it the basic production collection or something like this. And so you see, he's got a very different look. We've kind of lightened up our look. We've simplified things a little, kind of washed out a bit. And, you know, this is a nice little drum machine, a drum kit, finally. Mark might play a note on it, and, and, or just a few of the sounds. And so we've sort of evolved, as you see, from something that was kind of heavy and formal and simple through things that got very advanced, but you kind of got lost to things that sort of showed us maybe new ways of doing it. And, uh, and now here's a nice basic drum kit. Just, just you know, like an EDM percussion kit, you know? And so basic things, very nice. And by the way, drum sounds and C sound are dreadfully bad. You know, you would think that they're not hard to make, but there just aren't many. Most people don't make them. The only drums we have are Jean-Claude Rizet's drums and they're, they're terrible. Um, so, you know, even these are not great, but we're, we're sort of going for that. So, what Mark has done, and what Mark is doing, is he's starting to really go through the whole collection, standardize them all, redesign them all. Mark is an expert at Max, and Max's API. 
And so he's gone through and he's actually optimized things, even about Giorgio's incredible instruments, and started to really go through the whole library. The paper that Mark has delivered at this conference, which he's now had living from in a way, and I'm ha very happy that he is, he's about to show us some of his music and talk about that, and I'll stop talking. Um, what Mark has done is um, really given you all, in his formal paper, instructions on how to make C sound for live instruments and how to build them on your own. And it's a really nice little uh, kind of advice. Um, he's writing this uh, a whole set of tutorials for my Berkeley students and for my new book. But he's building, rebuilding the whole collection. And I'm really excited about that. Mark will show you a little glimpse, although washed out a little. We're not happy with the way it looks on the screen. Because he's made a really look that is compatible with the whole Boulanger Labs look, but it's, it's almost disappeared there, as you see in the preview. So we tried to gray it out a little, but it's a new kind of clean, really clean look. Um, and, um, and so he's now started to kind of give everything this really clean look, but you're not, it's not giving it real justice. It's, it's quite beautiful, his design, and, and uh, um, uh, for some reason it's washed out on the screen, so we just kind of grin and bear it. But I'm going to pass the ball now to Mark. I'm going to thank you for letting me rudely interrupt him and uh, let him take over and play some music and, and give you some of the tips and some advice. But I wanted to show you a little of the history because it was at the first C-Sound conference that we introduced this new idea, which was revolutionary. And I will tell you that my students have made a lot of music. This came out before Cabbage, and you could finally kind of use C-Sound, you know, to make tracks and, and, and stuff like that. Mark is now going to show us how to do even more. and, and uh, uh, Mark, take it away. Thank you for allowing me to interrupt. Thank you, Dr. Bay. Um, so, I wanted to actually not start off with music, but I wanted Good. to actually kind of give a, give a uh, really um, quick overview of, of actually going through and, and building uh, the season. Well, season. this is in his paper, and I, I didn't know you were going to go here, and I'm very happy you are. So he's going to make one for us. Okay, so this is... Um, this is this is a basic subtractive synth here. Let me let me pull up the CSD. Why don't, why don't we start from the CSD? So really really simple. Just one instrument. Um, it gets uh, a bunch of things. You you can kind of see this uh, Chan get opcode, and it, it uses this to to get values from main channels. And you that's 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 how you send data from Max to C sound is, is using. Um, channels and then using the Changia opcode in C sound to receive them as parameters. And so once once you take all that out, this is just a really simple instrument. Uh, it gets frequency from the MIDI note number, it gets the velocity of the, the current MIDI note and it uses them to drive an oscillator. Um, you have a, a filter that uh, has cutoff and resonance. And there's portamento on the cutoff and resonance, so you don't get zipper noise if you move the knob. That's uh, really important to do when you're designing um, instruments and effects, because as you're as you're automating stuff, or as you're dragging it around, if, if you're intending it to be used for live performance, um, if you if you don't use um, kind of integration or, or you know low pass filters or, or portamento, what have you. Um, you, you just get awful um, artifacts, and it, it really kind of kills it when you're like, oh man, this instrument sounds really cool, what happens when I, oh, uh, it sounds really bad, I don't want to use it anymore. Um, and then yeah, at the very end we have uh, an ADSR, and we just multiply the output of the filter by the ADSR, and that's our output. Uh, a couple things to note, there's an ODAC flag, this isn't required, for uh, C sound for live instruments to work, but sometimes it will write to a file if you don't put it in, as well as outputting through Max. And so, if you're running your session for a couple of hours, you end up with a very, very large file somewhere, eating up all your hard disk space. And then this last one is uh, suppresses waveform displays. And what that's useful for is is Max uh, C sound tilde logs the C sound console to the Max console, and so that's great when you're when you're debugging. It's great when you need to see like when instruments have been played, what F tables have been loaded. Uh, you know, if if something goes wrong and you have a compile error, it'll tell you where it is. But 
if you get into some of the more advanced instruments, like especially uh, Giorgio Zucco's, where there are hundreds of F tables, you just have like this this long, you know, thousands of lines dump as soon as you start an instrument on the Max console, which is kind of really annoying, and, and, and so it's just kind of convenient to put in that uh, suppress uh, waveform display flag. <coughs> so let's look at the, uh, the CSD for, or sorry, the Max file for a bit. Um, the way that this works is you you can you can start a device one of two ways. Um, you you can either start it uh, with by, by, by giving it a, a CSD, you, you do that with the C sound message, the name of the uh, the CSD you want to give it, and then start. You have to separate these with commas, otherwise they'll be read as the same message and uh, C sound until they won't know what you want. And so um, the the other way to do it is is this way that, that I had um, hooked up in described in the paper, which is you use this um, AD status, and this looks at the sampling rate and basically says, okay, when this device is loaded, um, tell me what the sampling rate is, and start the, uh, whatever the sampling rate is in the CSD, ignore it, and start the uh, CSD with this sampling rate that I'm giving you instead. And that sample rate is your session sample rate, or if you open it in max, it's max's sampling rate. And so the nice thing about that is as you change sampling rates, your CSD will change to adapt. Um, and, and so if you have effects or something that relies on being clocked precisely with the sample rate, um, uh, or, or, or that your, your sample, or you have like some math equation that says, oh, uh, the sample rate is this, and so I'm going to uh, do, do calculations uh, in time based on that, uh, it, it means that, that that kind of stuff will sync up, and it's a really convenient thing to have. Other than that, this is really simple. Uh, you have your ADSR knobs. Um, I have these being divided by a thousand, and the reason for that is um, actually this is a good time. There's um, you, you have the option on these knobs to to have different types of uh, units, and and so you you can see that here. I have time on uh, the attack, the decay, the release. I have percentage on sustain. Uh, I have frequency. Or, or you know hertz on the, the cutoff knob, and then I percentage again on the resonance. And um, so one of the things is, is that max likes milliseconds and C sound likes seconds. And so if you try to send uh, info from a time knob, uh, someone's going to have a bad day. And so if you divide it by a thousand, that gives C sound the, the timing information it wants, um, and, and that's that's pretty much what you have to do with all of your um, knobs that measure time unless you choose to um, either not label them or you could do your own custom labeling but it's it's kind of a hassle and not really worth it. Um, what else? Mark, what I like to say here to all of you is there's the CSUN tilde object and that's the magic. The thing that's amazing about live and CSUN tilde that most of you CSUNers can appreciate the entire C sound language, all 1,858 opcodes, are encapsulated in that one max object. So that's pretty amazing that the whole language is just in that one external. And then add all of max to that. So it really starts there, that C sound tilde object. And then, as Mark has pointed out, these new ways of kind of feeding it, either with these text strings or with comments or with variables, or with live uh, uh, dials, with menus, etc. And so you can see that his instrument, exactly as written in C sound, has now been kind of retrofitted into this Max world. All those labels, all those strings are now labels here. And so this is how you get that one-to-one -one correspondence between the two instruments, and how you, in fact, actually pass waveform dollar one or whatever. So that's that channel. The channel is this named channel. The names are there. The dollar one means whatever the numbers were coming from that knob or dial or menu. So there it is. Now, um, do you want to show one in action? Or I was just You've given more advice more even, I think. Yeah. You've even given more advice about in the article. But 
Yeah, yeah there, there's just a, a couple of things I wanted to do. Good, so thanks. as, as uh, Dr. B was touching on, uh, the way this kind of all ends up going into C sound is uh, with a message that has this syntax, C for channel, the channel name, and that corresponds to uh, the channel you're reading from, which yeah. channel you get. Yeah. And then uh, changeable argument or dollar sign one, uh, which takes the first argument that you give it. So if you are just using a knob, you can, this is a really quick trick in Max, you just plug it into the right end of the message box, and it's only sending one number. Um, but you can have times where you're, you're sending lists of numbers, and especially if you have um, an X, Y pad, it, it'll send both the X and the Y coordinates. So if you only want one of those, you can say, oh, I have a, like a changeable argument, one, and that's only the first argument, or two, and that's only the second argument. And uh, the last thing I'd like to look at in Max itself is the inspector. And it's this handy pop-up window, and it lets you kind of really shape your UI. This is, this is kind of what, what makes the, the new look possible. Um, you, can, you can change the colors for uh, a lot of, of different parameters. So like you can change the text, the color of the dial as it's filled in, the color of the dial as it's not, uh, the needle color. You can deactivate controls so they won't respond and they'll have a different color. So typically you, you gray out controls that you deactivate. Um, you do make them a light gray, and it kind of shows your user that, oh, this control's off right now, so it's not going to do anything. Um, and then down here is, is kind of the most useful uh, stuff. You can, you can set the scripting name. This is useful for uh, presets. You can set the long name. This is useful for uh, automating in live. You can, you can automate all these parameters in live, but they have the long name. And so if you use a different name than or, or if you don't change the name, it'll by default just be live dial. Or if you have 10 live dials, it'll be like live dial 10. And so you open it up to automate it in live, and just switching over really quickly, you can see as I you know, like choose parameters and this, they're all clearly named, but if you, if you don't do this, you know, it's like live dial 1, live dial 2, live dial 3, and it's just you don't know what's what, and it's a mess. Um, the last couple of things are... And so those were names that you gave the objects in the inspect? Yes, in, okay. in the long name. Yeah, and then the short name is just the object name that appears with it. Um, the last couple of things are you can choose the units. This is where you get time. Um, you can choose the range. And you can also exponentially scale things. So this is really useful. Um, these, these knobs go from zero seconds, more or less, to six seconds. But most of the time, you, you, you just want to be using like, you know, less than one, one second in. You, you just kind of want really uh, fine control over, the, uh, over quick envelopes. But if they're longer envelopes, you, you kind of have more leeway. So this lets you scale uh, w which parts of the knob are, are kind of take up more of the knob radius, which gives you more control over them without having to use like a, a finer control like command clicking, which just slow moves it instead. Um, yes. And so, oops, let's, let's get to this. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, would, would actually right now, I'd, I'd like to show um, automation first, uh, to do a little more example of that. And so, I'm going to activate this. I'm going to pull down a chord. And, so something just you know really really kind of easy to, to show what it is and how it works is you you click the parameter you want it'll be at a certain value I'm going to bring the cutoff all the way down I'm just going to do classic filter sweep um, kind of thing and uh, you can hit B and it lets you do step controls but you can also just um, you know like click break points and drag them you can select to select a, a, a larger region. Something like this, and so if I if I hit uh, play and uh, hold down chord, I get something like uh, sound eventually. Um, right. Okay, so let's start back from. And then I can kind of fill with this in, in real time. As, as it moves along, I can make quick changes if I was fast enough on my mouse, which I'm clearly not having that game today. Um, 
and, and do kind of like all, all kinds of interesting drawing of all my parameters. Uh, one thing that's kind of obvious and important to note is it only works with K-rate and A-rate parameters. Uh, I-rate parameters will obviously be automated, but um, they will only change when you, when you play a new note or if you re-trigger them inside the object. And unfortunately, I've been having technical difficulties with the CCs on this, so I'm not entirely sure I can do my piece. Um, I, I, I can't map anything to this today. So I'm, I'm afraid that's all I have. Um, um, unless, do you have anything? Yeah, well, I can, I can show you that for a second. Let me sure. just show you this one last thing. Yeah, I have the cords. So. Okay. So the other real advantage of this whole thing is, let's just go back to uh, uh, you want. No, I just want you to go uh, FM Bell for a second. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I'm going to put it back in. So. Whatever that is. Oh, uh, sure. This is the simple sense. Okay. The bottom line is that you know you have you know the synth that you might have created, and the nicest thing about all of this is uh, that you can you know you you kick into MIDI mode. That's command. You, you you grab something like cut off, and then you just assign a controller to it. Now I think you need to tell me in live preferences that this device is connected. Uh, as a controller. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you hit I, 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 I had reset all of this a while ago. So I have this and you want me to do it. So I want you to just add system. my, not a control service, yeah. but just tell me that this MIDI controller is on. Yeah. Both. Does it say? It should be. It's the end. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's go back and uh, let's uh, pick one of the objects again, please. Sure. Is it mapping? There we go. Good. Okay. Good. And another, pick another one. Uh, Assist. Do... So the point let's is, you can you can very quickly just go in and kind of MIDI learn. Let's get out of it. And so now, you know, just very quickly, I could assign these things. You couldn't do that at C sound, you know, at all for the longest time. The fact that you can very simply kind of work that way, rapidly adapt your instruments, modify them, synchronize them, is the real kind of extra power of, of live and putting C sound into live. So, I mean, Mark, I guess had done a piece, I don't know if it's there or you want to queue it up for us, but uh, um, if not, we could certainly take questions or, or give you a, a small conclusion. You know, mine is that putting these two environments together is really remarkable. And it's a lot of what we're starting to see now, Cabbage, uh, allowing us to make VSTs and audio units with C Sound Tilde, or especially C Sound for Live, letting us integrate C Sound into this great live environment, uh, production environment. Um, Cabbage lets us sort of finally drop our C Sound instruments right into Logic, and uh, and and those are the things we want to. Those of us who've dedicated ourselves to C Sound. My students in particular, well, they also love their production tools. And so they're not going to throw away logic or live so they can make academic avant-garde computer music. They're going to want to be able to bring C sound into their world. If we can't help our students bring C sound into our production world, then there's no purpose for C sound. We can't make C sound part of the way that the tool set that we're all using to make commercial, professional, and other music, then you know we're going to live in a little ivory tower. And the whole uh, spirit of C Sound from the days uh, that we began kind of dedicating a lot of our lives to it was to kind of get it out of the ivory tower. Uh, and uh, um, and this is a, a certainly a small example of it. And I know that Mark was certainly motivated to sort of make it, C Sound work, you know, better in this world. Mark, any final comments or final thoughts that you've had about your you, work? You pretty much you got them. No, but I, I'm, I'm just trying to share what, what, what we're saying. And, um, and like I said, Mark, uh, what I love is that he, he knows a lot more tricks about Max than I ever would. And, and he's bringing those now to our library. So if we're lucky, we'll have a, a really beautiful and robust uh, Sea Sound for Live collection revised by, by the holidays. And uh, and worth uh, uh, worth checking back in with us at that time because 
Uh, he's really brought a lot to it. And also, he's definitely left you all some great advice in the proceedings for you or your students to share with them if they're at all interested in making uh, live or CSOUND tilde-based instruments. Um, the other, I guess, really big point that we only shortly mentioned, but I would reiterate, the new version of Macs allows you to run live instruments native in Macs. The downside of CSOUND for live is you have to own live. You have to own live. Live isn't cheap. And so you're kind of stuck working there. Now, most of us are happy working there, but you're stuck working there. Now, CSOUND tilde or live instruments that you create with all of these bells and whistles can run natively in Macs. And Macs has a free standalone mode that works where you don't even have to buy Macs. You just can't edit things. But the bottom line is you could then just use it essentially in the spirit of CSOUND for free. So uh, we're in a really great time now with the fact that live instruments run native in, in Macs. And in fact, a lot of what Mark's doing as he's revising all these things is doing all of his work in Macs. He's actually not going back to live to do the work. So that's kind of new, too, for now. But, oh, I'm sorry you didn't get your, your controllers to work or whatever, but you got to see how easy it is, but it's nice when you you don't have a track. You want us to hear a little of the track without controlling it? No, because I, I had it all chopped up and stuff. So no. about this, it's like, oh, you can't cut yeah. it. Well, I'm really honored. Mark had just graduated from Berkeley. I'm thrilled. This is also like one of his first conferences that he's presented at. I'm so excited to be co-presenting with him, and I'm super proud of what my students do. I hope that you can. Uh, 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 know that, and I'm really excited to be here with Mark and have Mark kind of show some of this work. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you.